I'm Frances Wood, um, and for a very long time, for 30 years or so, I was head of the Chinese collections in the British Library. So my whole sort of working life has been to do with Chinese books. And then in my spare time, I'm, I used to amuse myself by writing books about China um, to try and introduce Chinese culture to people in the UK and Europe. I first thought about Chinese when I was at school. I come from a family of linguists, if you like. And I have to say, from the moment I began, I've just loved it. It's the most fascinating language. Chinese has just been an endless wonder for me. When I graduated, um, I finished my degree. My grandmother died and left me a little bit of money, I think 250 pounds or something like that. And um, I was able to spend it on going to China with the first British youth delegation. Knowing a little bit of Chinese was a wonderful opening for me. And we went to all sorts of wonderful places, places nobody would go now. And then in 1975, I took the opportunity to go back to China for a year. I thought I had to go to China for a longer period of time to improve my spoken Chinese because at, at Cambridge you couldn't really learn to speak very much and there were very few opportunities. In the early 1970s, China was still an incredibly poor country. You could wake up in the middle of the night in the Peking Hotel, look out of the window and see flocks of sheep being driven along Chang'anjie. Um, it was a very different place. The greatest change has been the extraordinary um, development of China, you know, the amazing rise in living standards of most Chinese people. Um, and that's, that's fantastic. After a year spent in China improving my language, I, I got the opportunity to work in the British Library, um, which was a chance really to handle the nation's most important Chinese collections. The great Dunhuang collection, the great mass of material that had been brought back by Oral Stein from Dunhuang. I think it's very difficult for people to understand how amazing Dunhuang is. In this tiny cave, you have the world's earliest paper archive. I mean, this, these are papers that were made maybe 500, 600 years before Europe had even sniffed at paper, had even heard of paper. And it's massively important for Chinese history because it tells us everything that we ever needed to know about the Silk Road and China's communication with the outside world. The Diamond Sutra is certainly the most important book in the entire world, or the most important printed object in the entire world. If you think of what people say about you know, the advent of printing, the importance of printing, what print has meant to us, um, the Diamond Sutra marks step one on that road. And it is a very beautiful item as well. I mean, it was, it was printed in 868 AD, which is 500 years before Gutenberg. It was printed on paper. Paper in, was invented in China in about in the early Han Dynasty. I mean, both of those aspects, paper and printing, are Chinese firsts and deserve to be celebrated. That material in particular really was crying out for work. I suppose I led the charge in finding money and finding help. Over, um, I suppose, a period of about five years, we had Chinese conservators coming what they would do was very gently flatten out these piece, paper pieces and then they were eventually what we called encapsulated. We ended up with an extra 14,000 items added to the collection, all of which can now be seen um, by visitors. The whole project of bringing Chinese conservators over, bringing Chinese um, catalogers over, experts and so on, welcoming Chinese catalogers. That was, is the thing that I'm most proud of in, in, in the library. My role was just that one of, you know, working in the library, making things accessible and helping Chinese scholars to use them and so on. But my goodness, I was so lucky in that, you know, meeting these amazing scholars too, I learned such a lot about the Dunhuang materials themselves. If the Diamond Sutra was returned to China, I would be delighted. Um, I mean, I've had the privilege of being close to it for about, well, for about 30 years, um, and to, to know it very well and to have watched its restoration by our conservators. And I think 
we can feel a pride that it's been beautifully treated in the UK. So I think we could be quite proud in handing it back to China and say, look, this we have looked after very well. I think it's fantastically important to educate um, British people about Chinese history and culture because China is there, because China is important, because we ought to try and understand, but also because if they're anything like me at all, they will just find it so endlessly interesting. We deserve respect and the Chinese people with their own culture also deserve respect. And I think the more you learn about a different culture, the better both sides are. Understanding and empathy are, are absolutely essential to the human experience. We are all exactly the same when it comes to kind of utterly basic feelings. Um, and what we have that is different is cultural. And just to see the difference that culture makes is absolutely fascinating. There are difficulties sometimes in understanding where cultural matters come up against cultural matters. And I'd only hope that the only thing a bridge builder can do is just to point out how easy it is to get across this point. I mean, we just need to break down barriers and then build the bridge across. Um, just helping people to see that there's nothing to be afraid of.